Okay. Teka lang, hindi pa. <laughs> okay, now here we go. Going live. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. Welcome back to the Diabolical, everyone. We're oh, right. <laughs> I'm back with Budget Tan and Kajo Baldissimo. We are talking Trece, book eight. Guys, congratulations. Book eight is Thank out. You. Thank you. <laughs> book eight, Shadow Agent. So, okay. Um, I know everyone wants me to ask this question, which is, why the delay? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> why the delay that's a good question um yeah it was i don't know should we blame the lockdown <laughs> <laughs> on this it's but it, it it's it uh it i can't help but reflect and feel that you know during lockdown everyone else did a lot of creative projects and then i was the one that was super late with like submitting scripts well how old was your kid what during the lockdown? during lockdown? Yeah, I've. Well, since that you know you're busy. You're busy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's things yes. also. <laughs> <laughs> we have twelve concurrent viewers right now. Everyone is saying hi. Um, and Hello. James James Smith, who is a comic creator from the states, would like to say that it is exciting that Tressa is now available at mainstream retailers like Barnes and Noble in the states. How does that feel, guys? Weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, we yeah. were in Canada a couple of months ago, and then yeah, it was it was always fun to just spot it in the wild, um, uh, in their bookstores over there. So, so yeah, every once in a while, the you know we we get some feedback from uh, brand new readers who just discovered it. So uh, very thankful that uh, Ablaze has. Uh, done a great job at getting it into the bookstores as well as the comic bookstores. I think we have to clarify because there are international listeners in the chat uh, that the Ablaze versions are not up to book eight. Uh, it is up to book six. Except- yeah, it is currently up to book six. It will eventually six. obviously get to book eight. Um, and But this weekend at Comic at Mega Trade Hall, uh, the whole weekend, October 21 and 22, Tressa Book 8, Shadow Agents, and Book of Midnight, which is an omnibus of Book 4 to 6, will be released. And Kajo will be flying in to sign these books. Okay. Yes, yes. Shadow Agents. The most important question I'm going to ask the two of you is uh, what awesome person did you get to write the intro? I can't. Can I? I can't remember who Spoiler. wrote it. <laughs> oh yes, he's okay. <laughs> he's so he seems okay. he seems pretty cool to me. <laughs> he did a good job writing the intro. So yes, we got of course Doi uh, to to write the intro. Doi of course has been uh, even before podcasting was one of the first people to uh, review or talk about Trese many many years ago. So it just felt like it was about time. <laughs> thank you other, for, thank you for the honor. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the the real highlight of my intro is uh, you get to publish that commission by Bill yeah. Sinkevich, by yeah. the oh, great yeah, Bill Sinkevich. Yeah. So the um, it uh, coincided that the Dewey got to commission uh, Bill Sinkevich, our idol to do a Tresa sketch and I can't still can't believe he did it um, and that we got permission to reprint it so yep you will get to read the first page that you'll see when you open the book is Dewey's intro and mm-hmm. the page after that is you know that we have a Tresa Bilsinkevich art in book eight <laughs> I'm going to go straight to Kajo I'm going to ask Kajo Kajo how much are you influenced by Bilsinkevich how much? How much? Very much. <laughs> actually, actually, yung aside from the style, yung mentality, eh, yung the, the way I think Bill Sinkevich is very experimental. At saka, if you observe the lines, yung lines niya na nilalagay ni Bill Sinkevich on the page, 
parang there's so much freedom and also a, a certain amount of control that he got from siguro mastery kasi very very very, very prolific si Abel Sinkevich so siguro sobrang daming more than 1 million hours of practice so yung yung mentality niya na yun, I, I try to ano, practice that also Kajo, I know that you have redrawn a lot of the earlier books to fit a more uh, a more scratchy, sketchy style, uh, and I think that you what you share with with Bill Sinkevich is I think that you are both heavily influenced, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, by Sergio Topi. Oh, oh yeah, yes, Topi, oh, right. uh, one of the uh, masters, masters for me. Very cool. So. Your first, um, your first story in Shadow Agents, guys. You take Trese out of the Philippines. That is a first. Uh, what led to this particular this particular decision? I think for so yeah, in the first story, which is Tiger Burning Bright, which traumatized a lot of readers. <laughs> so many readers. <laughs> and when was that, Kajo? Was that twenty? 2020? 2020, yes. Oh, first, 2020. The first time we serialized it, right? Because and you put it, we were putting it up on Instagram. No, not yet. We were putting it on Facebook uh, okay. by page. Uh, and then it was only, when was that? This year or, or late last year when Kajo decided to upload it panel by panel uh, on, on his Instagram and me on Facebook. But the the unintentionally we started to serialize it on the Trese Facebook page and then we stopped at that page where one of the characters <laughs> dies or <laughs> so did you not think this through <laughs> and and yeah so so it took them a, a year to find out what happened to that character but yeah sending Trese to another country it had always been it was one of those little things i wrote down on on, on my notebook about you know what if uh, trese goes to you know investigate a case where there are other filipinos right so you know does he does she get called by an ofw to go to hong kong or to singapore or does she get called to somewhere to the middle east because yeah again there's like a a uh, Filipino in trouble there with some, you know, with the magical entities in the Middle East. But the idea for doing something in Jakarta itself really came about because uh, of of the launch of Trese the Anime, because yeah. our other producer, Shanti Harmain, is Indonesian, and uh, Shanti and Tanya Yuson's company, Base Entertainment, is based in Jakarta. So it was just a, a fun thought of why would Trese visit Jakarta? And um, I did a bit of research on the different types of magical entities and monsters that, uh, that they have in their folklore and found a reason for her to go there. And they're very similar to ours. Very similar to, you know, they have their fire entities, they have their... Aswangs, but they look like gorillas with wings. <laughs> Which makes sense because, you know, before the Spanish came, it's not like the Philippines was a country. We had various mythologies and it makes sense because Indonesia is not too far from us yep. that it would yep. be similar. Kaja, did you like drawing all that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very, very... Not not really different, actually very similar. But there's a subtle uh, no, differences then to even the the way people. Siguro mas marami. I, I would say mas maraming Muslim, as a Christian compared to the Philippines. So siguro mas appropriate yung attire ng ibang mga tao sa pagiging Yeah, yeah. Um. So. As you were talking about Tiger Burning Bright, we have a load of comments on the chat <laughs> going from OMG, so much trauma, sad face, PTSD, everyone was screaming. <laughs> so you you went and you left it, you drew enough pages to get to the page where a very important character dies 
and then you left it there. Are you surprised at the level of reaction that that got? Yeah, yeah. We because because we knew how it was going to end, but but yeah, it it really go went to show how you know invested the readers were are in in the characters right so it was super surprising to see that kind of reaction and um and yeah hopefully they've recovered kajo are you happy that you're not on facebook <laughs> yes yeah. <laughs> yeah so we'll see after well by the one sorry <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, we're we're, we're, we're trying to avoid spoilers. We're trying to avoid spoilers, uh, but mm-hmm. uh, but I think uh, the the idea of Cresce going abroad was something that has been kind of planted in the idea of people's minds ever since the anime dropped. Because the cliffhanger to the anime, I'm sorry if you haven't seen a two year old show, is <laughs> is uh, takes place in another country. No, so, no. oh, it takes place here, but it's with somebody from another country. Yes. 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 So uh, now I have to ask about that particular show. Was that your idea, Budge? No, that it was. So again, it was surprising that uh, Jay Oliva and the team came up with that cliffhanger ending. Um, and and yeah, they they do have you know thoughts and plans on on where to take that. But um, uh, again, it it was just a. Um, I don't know. There's something in the there's something in the air. I guess when you start working on Trece, where you start to like, you know, uh, have similar ideas. So uh, super surprised when I got to read that script that that was the their plan for it. Someone uh, Ayanami Fairudo asks: Do other countries have their own Alexandra, and will she meet them? Oh, good question. Well, in the read the book, <laughs> I, I think that's what we established in the Tiger Burning Bright storyline. So aside from encountering the underworld, she got to meet Jakarta's supernatural protector. Um, and and I would imagine that's the same for, for the different countries. So it's just a question of will she meet the protector of that foreign land or will she meet the... The, the kingpin of crime of that supernatural underworld. Did you base the protector off of someone else, uh, if, off of a pre-existing character in Indonesia, for example, no, or did you make him no. up? Yeah, I mean, it it is based on on Indonesian folklore of a tiger man, right? So, but in their uh, folklore, it's a it's a either a weird tiger or he's he really just is. He doesn't turn human. He just is the the sacred spirit of of that land, um, but yeah, event. But in trying to figure out how does this tiger man fit into the Tresi universe, then he became more of um, what do you call this? A guy who wears a mask. So, but he does have that tiger spirit that powers him. Kajo, how did you go about designing this character, this new character? Well, Budge suggested. A bunch of uh, very famous, <laughs> very, very famous actors from Indonesia. That's a. Uh, I think. I think no one saw that movie. I think there are, some characters were based on that that very niche movie called The Raid. Mm, so I'm some, gonna nod like I've heard of it. Well. <laughs> Actors have ended up. You've actually seen some of these actors because of the raid. These actors ended up appearing in a Star Wars in one of the Star Wars movies. Um. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they've end like Hollywood has just picked them up. You know, they've they've come out as good guys. They've come out as bad guys in a lot of Hollywood movies. Uh, but yeah, the raid was where they became famous. Interesting. Interesting. Um. Okay. Let me ask. A few months ago, Verdugo came out. Yes. And then we learned about um, certain things about Alexandra's teacher, the metalero. Hmm. Uh, did you write any of this with that in mind, or is that to come after? What are you talking about? <laughs> Just 
Okay, this somebody says watch the raid if you want more. <laughs> okay, see. <laughs> somebody somebody in the chat has watched the raid. <laughs> okay. Okay. No, that the metal Lero has gotten um has uh, mentored people who may not be the best people. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah um it 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 um it just made sense. Again, it's it was one of those ideas that came from JB and and you know he's uh as far as i am concerned he's one of the teachers right so um and and like all teachers some of your students <laughs> don't really come out to be the best students right <laughs> um so there so so yeah i don't you know um uh, i guess that was the thinking behind it and and um it just seemed to flow into the storyline of verdugo as well Okay, guys, without any uh without any real spoilers, what would you how would you very quickly describe the rest of the book after Tr Tiger Burning Brick? Mm. Go Kajo. <laughs> very I would say very relaxing. <laughs> it's the least it's the least intense volume of Trese that I well I've drawn. I would that's, say, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I don't know if you agree, but yeah, well, especially when you get to the last case, right? So I think that kind of oh. makes sense. I, right, like, that actually does make sense. Uh, no, yeah. Where is, is that? I'm trying to find. Okay, so let me read. Let me read the back cover blurb, which we haven't yet uploaded. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give you a hint of what's in book eight. So in the city of Manila, there's a secret race to find hidden objects of power and magical ingredients. A fallen star that can grant someone godlike powers. A sword that can trap spirits and deliver a fiery curse. A stone from a graveyard that can bring back the dead. A gun that never runs out of bullets as long as the target is guilty of a crime. In the past, these gifts were granted to deserving people who became agents of order. But lately, some of these weapons have been given to agents of chaos who lurk in the shadows. When the supernatural world begins to threaten our world, that's when the city needs Alexandra Trece. Trece, book eight, Shadow Agents. There you go. Way to, way, to, way to cheat on the question by reading the back of the book. <laughs> But no, no, no. Okay, so I think it's very fair to say just that just from that description, you are drawing very heavily on Filipino superhero tradition. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> so after I read after I read your intro, it's like, oh yeah, that's what we did right there. <laughs> it, was that not intentional? <laughs> no. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, so the funny thing is, so I couldn't, there there has been a story arc that I've been trying to write and I've told Kajo about it. So maybe it's book nine. I don't know. But the thing is, every time I try to start writing it, I just get writer's block. So that's the reason why. So book eight is also structured like standalone cases. But we also brought in, and I needed to find a way to, um string together these these storylines and what we did was as for people who follow us on on Instagram and Facebook we have introduced the astronomer as a new character uh in in the Trese universe um and he was originally um um a spin-off or a spin-off book so we originally way back in 2010 me and Kajo came out with a book called Talis and that was supposed to be the, you know, if Trece is all about the supernatural stuff, Talis was going to be our all-out superhero comic book, but with the Pinoy twist. Um, so we came out with one issue, and I wrote the second issue, but never got to finish it. Or I started the second issue, but never got to finish it. In trying to figure out what other stories can go into this book, 
the 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 that old script just kept coming up every time I was looking through my notes of what other trash stories can I write, and the Talis story kept coming up, and I thought this second story, I want to tell this now, and I want Tresse to be the one to it's the and, and the 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 title of the story is the Ballad of San Rivilla. And I want Tresse to be the one to go to San Rivilla when originally it was another hero going to San Rivilla. And, and the more I wrote that core script, the more these other vignettes started to come to mind. And yes, I guess because of Talis, of, of Talis's mission to give magical stones to, to deserving people, then it became uh unconsciously <laughs> a tribute to Filipino superheroes. Kaja, did you have fun drawing various variations of Filipino superheroes? You're on mute. You're on mute, dude. <laughs> so don't say yeah. Yeah. Uh I enjoy that a lot. Say I I I uh I'm always fond of the uh, 80s and 90s na you know, classic uh, movies, even seventies. So, and Diana, I just had to, I just had to bring back, well, visually, the things that I enjoyed, that I liked from all those characters, and then hopefully made them our own. Siguro, hindi ko alam if I was successful, but I, I tried. <laughs> we tried. I think you were successful, but we'll see on fr- Saturday what everyone thinks. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Somebody, uh, Jelmer Josh Gamboa, heard you say Talis and then said, let's go. Talis, let's go. <laughs> like, I don't think I've heard of Talis, Budge. So you've got no? some really devoted people in oh. the chat. <laughs> yeah, because we only released it. I don't think we only released it at one Comic Con. And then mm-hmm. I don't think. We sold it in the others. Stars. Yeah, yeah. I, stars, think, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it was a comic con release. Yeah. And, Marco, uh, oh, it's okay. Marco, I and, think that's right. <laughs> Marco Angelo Oliveira is asking: Is Ka Joshua a reference to Sir Kajo? Oh, I <laughs> Ka Joshua and Kajo sounds pretty funny. <laughs> Shinsuka Joshua. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's, let's, let's ask JB that question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So none of us knows. We're sorry, Marco. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, my question for you, uh, because we are talking about superheroes and, you know, because it actually, what this reminds me of is the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Did you ever mm-hmm. finish the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Did you get to the end? Only book one. As the, uh, when the League of Extraordinary, Extraordinary Gentlemen started, starts within the Victorian era, and then mm-hmm. as it goes into the decades, uh, they're, they're slowly but surely superheroes show up. Always public domain English superheroes, but superheroes show up. Mm. Um, and that's what this reminds me of. Uh, so my question for you is, Trece has powers, fights crime, has a costume, has sidekicks, eight books in. Have you ever considered her a superhero? Well, personally, I don't see Tresa as a superhero. And it's because I don't think Tresa sees herself as a superhero. Maybe. In my budge. Point. I never thought of it. Yeah, same, same. It's like, I guess Trece would have been more, yeah, I think more like Sherlock Holmes or more like a pulp detective, except for everything else that you mentioned, do you? <laughs> Sherlock Holmes has a costume, has supernatural a brain sidekick. power, <laughs> a, side, a sidekick, yeah. an arch enemy. Oh, nah. true, true. Uh, I mean, I think that's that's all all of the ingredients that you know. Co- it's from the pulp era that comics have borrowed that, right? So, um, so yeah, I think when we, I, I there, I guess there are moments where 
you can obviously see how we've borrowed from superhero comic books. Um, I think even like book six, um, I wrote in the afterward of like, this is me wanting to do that grand old Professor X recruiting his mutants bit, right? So I had, you know, we had Verdugo recruit his squad. And it it's really that love of, I want to do that same thing that they did, right? Or do it my way. Um, but I think, uh, and yeah, there was also that moment when, uh, what was that? In, um, when, when we had the plant elemental, uh, lady, you know, uh, wreak havoc on the LRT. That felt like a superhero moment. Uh, so, you know, in in theory, you know, um, Trece would keep to the shadows or or not be seen in public, you know, saving a baby and stuff like that, right? So those are like the superheroic stuff, which you see a lot of it in this book. <laughs> So yeah, maybe this is the this is where she comes out of the superhero closet, and she's more superheroic here than any other book. Yeah, just to let people know, that's what my intro is all about. Because I, when you offered me the chance to re, to to do the intro, I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna write. And then as I'm reading the book, I'm like, wait, is Tressa a superhero? So I think so, guys. Uh, go read the book. I'm not gonna spoil any of it anymore, other than to say that. It does feel like within the book, uh, as you make references to all of these classic Filipino superheroes, and for those of you in the chat who aren't from the Philippines or are unfamiliar, this is a great way to learn about Filipino superheroes. Um, so as it's going, so ev- there's, a, there's a full story in, uh, you know, in every episode, but it does feel like you're building up to something that's not in this in this book. What do you... Are you building up to something that's not in this book? Yeah. <laughs> Let's make Kanjo <laughs> answer that question. <laughs> well, maybe. I well, my answer is going to be uh, well, well, based on our history with the first six books, uh, the third book is always a season ender. Feels like a season mm, ender. That's true. So yeah. I will just assume that book nine is the same way. It's the grand finale for the for the well the season <laughs> third yeah. season in this case. Yep. So so connected to that, <clears throat> we were putting together um, book of midnight, right? Mm-hmm. So as I was putting, as I was like rereading it to check for 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 typos. And and I'm sure something still got. Uh, we still didn't uh, catch all of those typos. I messaged Nida and Kajo, and I said, "Wow, Book of Midnight has 13 cases. What a coincidence!" And then Kajo said, "Wasn't that the plan all along?" <laughs> <laughs> yes, because Book of Murders, the the the, uh, the first three books also has yeah. 13 cases. That was planned. Book of Midnight, <laughs> I was surprised. Wow, we did make 13 cases for it. So, so in, in effect, yeah, Kajo is right. The third book in every uh in every triptych and every trilogy does feel it, it. I don't know, it just feels like maybe it's because of every single trilogy we've watched, you know, since we were kids. It just subconsciously it feels like we gotta make this third book big. Um, and and I guess that's that's what it does. So, so yeah, it is building up to to something, and and you know, me and Kajo have talked about it. We have like very loose ideas on what will happen, uh, uh, toward towards that end. You know, as we work our way to that ending. Um. So so yeah, this this is just all laying down the groundwork, um, introducing all of the players. Uh, which starts to worry me because there are so many players now. Which we're there not... are so many players now, <laughs> so many. and it's like, can we go back and see all of these people again? Um, so yeah, that's going to be the interesting juggling act for books 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> oh, why did you stop at 13, Budge? Why did we stop at 13, Kaj? Because Trece. <laughs> ah. 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 Mm. 
We'll yes. we'll put that right there. Uh, somebody Far Farunks in the chat asks, "Kaya papuba, sir?" Uh-huh, that's it. Is Is that for you, Fudge? I think it's for you guys. Kaya <laughs> paang. Because this was typed while you were talking about balancing out everything until book nine. Uh, heat up. It's hard. Very. <laughs> there was a point when I'm um, drawing, I think, chapter three. Mm. When uh, I had to pull out all the Tressy books because I've already forgotten how they look like. <laughs> sobrang daming characters, sobrang dami ng costume, tapos may mga subtle, subtle details in them that I'm sure the fans will spot if namiss ko, namiss namin ni Budge. So, but, but wala na siya nung ganitong detail. So, medyo, yeah, uh, so many, the, the, the universe, the, the, the Trese universe is getting bigger, more characters being introduced, and it's getting, yeah, honestly, it's getting harder, <laughs> getting more difficult, but it's still fun, so, yeah. Kaya, no, well, do you, have, do you have plans on how to make that easier? Working smarter, not harder? Or <laughs> One of the things I want to do is actually make a list of... Because the, the thing I've messed up, and that was one of the last things that me, Nida, and Kajo was fixing, that for this book, I like misspelled somebody's name. There were two new names that we introduced, and every time I read it, it's like, <laughs> why did I change the spelling of that name <laughs> Budge, that's just a Tresa tradition. Like, yeah. Tresa's mother. Is, <laughs> which, by the way, we fixed. So, for all of you who still have that copy, so where she had the other name, that's a collector's edition already. Because <laughs> <laughs> we fixed it in the Avenida edition. I thought the no prize explanation was just that one was her first name and yeah. one was her second name. Yeah. And that's why her <laughs> name is MM. <laughs> M yeah. not, um, not strike fear, but she's MM. Ayanami Fairudo asks the stones in our secret constellation. There was mm. a stone. Mm. So was Nida Vargas one of the people given a stone? Yes. There, the answer is yes. Well, well it came from the same source, but did she get it from Talis? We don't know. Okay. Mm. Okay. Miranda Melinda was her is her mother's name. <laughs> Give that person a prize. <laughs> Ira Delo Morales asks, will there be a death of a main character? In book eight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think everyone's already seen a death of a main character. <laughs> they haven't read the last part of that. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's pretty clear that that character dies. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think we can clearly say there is a death. Um, and uh, someone, Saberkite, is suggesting that uh, there should be a character profile database. Now I'm imagining Kajo drawing a whole George Perez like <laughs> Tresa spread. And now Kajo is like, my, my wrists hurt just thinking about it. Yes, yes. I think it's time, Kajo. We need to do like a who's who. Know, yes, yes. Uh, yung, uh, what's that? What what do you call that? Source book. Um, <laughs> for our for our sake. <laughs> uh, for our, well, uh, the, uh, you know that's it. why. Yeah, go ahead, Kaj. No, no. Okay. Get it. That's that's why they made the official handbook of the Marvel Universe. It's for the creators. It wasn't for the fans. Really? Oh, because they had a hard oh, wow. time keeping track. And then once, wow. like, it was published, and then a character showed up again, it was completely outdated. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Thank, uh, thank you, yeah. for Wiki, and whoever is updating the Trece Wiki page. Thank you very much. Ah, 
So your follow-up question about the death is uh, no more resurrections this time. <laughs> anyone who dies who uh, does not get resurrected. <laughs> it's, a, it's a comic book. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You never know, guys. Like, no matter, no one who says they're not resurrected isn't actually resurrected. Um, will there be another battle for book nine since every end of these books has a battle in it? Book one with Talag Busao, book two with the Tagat taga Dagat. None. Okay, none. <laughs> Are we going to see the madam in book eight? Vem, uh, Vern Santos asks. Yes. She's back. She's back, baby. <laughs> How are you guys handling, uh, like handling the buildup of the madam as as we go? Like, is she really like the big bad, the arch enemy at this point? In book eight, you'll get to see more of how she functions as well, or what you know, get a hint of her agenda. Um, and yeah, we'll see how where that takes us. Okay. Um, as we go on further, Budge, you know, we mentioned Verdugo earlier. That is, I know, um, there's it's the first ever official Tresa spin-off that takes place in the Tresa universe because bloodlines may or may not, right? Uh is so so it would just pretty much depend on what works out as being part of canon. Uh, do you have any plans to spin off the other brothers? Yep. Yeah, yes. You can't talk about it yet. Because I haven't written it. No. <laughs> I, I mean, in in Bloodlines, actually, the the ha, the the last two stories of Bloodlines are the ones that are what ifs, right? Okay. So the 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 first um, stories, which is, uh, and and again, the every time. And we've done it twice in Bloodlines and in the Comicette special where we've had one of the Trece brothers get a book from the library where Miranda Trece had written her visions, right? So a Miranda Trece vision is our um, gateway to doing a what if or else world story featuring um, what do you call this? Trece characters. So hence, that's why in Bloodlines, you have Father Trece teaming up with Dakila and teaming up with uh, Detective Andara from the Payasa story that me, Brandy, and Mark Gatella created way back in 1994. And that was really more of like, we need to have closure on this character. <laughs> so let's do this little team up. I was uh, going to say Father Trese, everyone's favorite Trese. Yes, yes. <laughs> everyone's favorite father, favorite daddy. <laughs> Kajo, are you surprised at the popularity of Father Trece? Oh, weird. <laughs> weird. Parang, ano ko, parang, yeah, mahilig sa bawal mga taas siguro, I guess. <laughs> siguro. <laughs> uh, yeah, people are saying uh, Rick, Rick Trece, Jimmy series. Uh, that uh, I think there's a there's a whole market for for the Trese for the Trese brothers. I think it's it's just figuring out what is different from from the main Trese book. And again that's we talked about this when when we were last time here doing with JB of like, you know, how do we make Verdugo's uh, stories different from from what Trese does. So I think it's just finding that uh, angle and making sure that you know, as we explore the, the Trece world through Jimmy or Rick or Professor Rick or Father Trece that we get to show something different um, and 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 at the same time that you still have those familiar you know characters and ingredients that um, that the readers love in in reading a Trece book right so yeah in the same way it's it's interesting how the Batman at a, at a certain point, the Batman editors had decided that what detective comics is going to be about detective work, <laughs> and that Batman is where he does superheroic stuff, and then he's got, you know, Batman and Robin where it's about the father and son relationship, 
So, and then Gotham Knights is all about, you know, so it was interesting how they've, they know that people are, or the readers are, want to see more of that Gotham universe, right? But they, it can't just be a repeat of what they just read a month ago or a week ago. So I think that's the same thinking behind trying to figure out how do we spin off or do, you know, individual uh, adventures for the brothers or even, you know, I'd love to, it's been a while since we've seen Captain Guerrero, which I realized after reading book eight, it's like, I know, where's Guerrero in Tapia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would be great to get back to Presinto Trece. It would be great to see Hank again, uh, tending at the bar. So yeah, a lot, so many uh, corners and dark alleyways of the Trece verse that we'd love to explore again. Okay, uh, we're running out of time, so I'll I'll go very quick questions. Number one, can people expect anything, uh, any other features aside from the main narrative in book eight? Any other features? Yeah, because in the Ablaze versions, you guys give oh. like little profiles in the back, which you don't do for the Avenida versions because the Avenida versions are for the local audience, the man. So, uh, is there anything for for the Avenida version or no? The uh for book eight, the, the biggest thing that we have here is the Bill Sienkiewicz artwork. <laughs> um, but Book of Yes, but Book of Midnight does have so if you didn't pick up the Ablaze editions, then pick up Book of Midnight because it has all of the journal entries and brand new journal entries as well. Um, um in, in Book of Midnight. So so again, you get you know the, the way we've written the journal entries is you get a bit of history of, uh, it's not just describing what the character, the creature is. You kind of get a sense of, you know, what was the, when was the first time the Trece family got to meet these creatures and characters. Uh, so, so there. Kajo, could, could we expect anything uh, during your signing on, uh, over the weekend? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I think, yeah, well, we'll we'll bring ano yung mga merch that has the merch and maybe the we're we're selling a poster. The poster is basically the the a cover art for Book of Murders and Book of Midnight, and then yeah, maybe I uh, we hope you enjoy ano the book eight tapos. Balik kayo sa, ano, sa January for book 9. May susubukan kami ni Budge for book 9. <laughs> Announce na lang namin. Sa wow, January. three months, three months, Budge. <laughs> Tignan namin kung mag-word pag-uusapan pa namin. <laughs> Pero yeah, book 9 will not be will not be made for uh, another three years. Katulad ng mga iba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Book, yeah nine, exactly. book nine will happen next year. Yep. Yep. My my friend Peter Turingan says, congrats Team Trese on the new release. Salamat po. Thank, Thank you very much. All right, now people are going, what? January? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the So the next question that I have, the next two questions that I have, which are my last two questions. I'm not sure if you're at liberty to answer this because the first one is when is book nine coming out, which you already kind of answered. Yes. Which tell like January? <laughs> yeah. Well, in the same way we did Tiger Burning Bright, maybe we'll just give you you know half the story where somebody dies, and then <laughs> then you have to wait another year to figure out how that what happens to the person. Okay. This the la- the last question that I have is: Is there any word on season two? No, nope. Um, uh, no, no word. Um, but as you can see, uh, or I don't know if you can see, um, our producers uh, Tanya and Shanti with Base Entertainment have been doing a lot of projects with, um, with Netflix. Um uh, and as well as Amazon Prime, so um so there so they're in you know they're still in touch with Netflix, but as far as season two is concerned, we're still waiting. 
waiting. Can I give you my theory? As my, it's a pure theory as to why it's 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 been hard to get word on that. Yes. It's a, it's a pure theory, but yes. like soon after Trese came out, right? Netflix did that whole purge of their animation department. And then I think the other thing is Arcane. Like Arcane came out and all of a sudden the bar for animation is like Yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's not fair. <laughs> they had they had yeah. I mean it's 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 uh, now that you mention it, I think it's um encouraging to see that they finally released the new Castlevania, right? Because that also went, you know, uh went silent for a while. Um, but yeah, definitely it I even though there was some buzz about it, it was not as high as Arcane. I think Arcane really just set the bar for for animation uh, as far as Netflix is concerned. You know, in the same way Squid Games just uh became their their cash cow for for everything. Now you have a what? A, a Squid Games reality show and they're building a Squid Games theme park. I just read about it. So, you know, yeah, it, it needs to be that uh, spectacular to to um, get a season two, I guess. Um, so uh, Peter says regarding your January announcement, super quick turnaround, a la Brubaker Phillips Reckless. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, yeah, that's a perfect example of like, Oh, it's the lockdown. What can we do? We're going to make three graphic novels and release it every quarter. <laughs> like how? Oh. And what? And, and and that was at a time when Brewbreaker almost drowned and was suffering from PTSD. And so, yeah, I have no excuse <laughs> for not finishing the scripts. And I mean, life is life happens, Budge. It's fine. Yeah. I think yes. we all agree it's worth the wait. Yeah, that's actually my last question. Is there anything else you guys want to mention? Or um, a bit early, but we'll we'll be uh, home and we'll be together in December. For Super oh right, Manila. yeah, for Super Manila, you guys will be here. Uh, that will take place in Circuit uh, Circuit Malls Ayala, uh, Circuit Mahati Ayala Malls. Yeah. Um, and uh, I do believe the plan is for somebody you know to do a Q&A with you on stage. Really? <laughs> who, who could that be? I wonder <laughs> I wonder who that could be. I, and, and hopefully there'll be like que interesting questions <laughs> <laughs> to, to ask. They announced the Civil Wars. They announced the Civil Wars in Super Manila. Then. Yep. Yes. So, uh, so Will's is uh, Will's Portasho is showing up for uh, Super Manila as well. That's that's in December of this year. Uh, William C asks, "Is there any news about Bloodlines Two? No, yeah. um, we uh, not not right now. Nothing solid. But yes, it would be great to get that back on track. So I'm just happy that we got to finish Book Eight and Book of Midnight. So now there's a bit more." headspace to work on other stuff and that includes bloodlines too and john ray asks how many billboards do we need to vandalize to get season two <laughs> One, twice thank you john ray twice as much maybe or, yeah. <laughs> or just go to the, or just vandalize the netflix office but don't say that didn't come from me <laughs> this is on record but <laughs> oh no is this live Damn it. So, guys, just make <laughs> sure to go to Netflix, turn Trese on, and play it on loop. <laughs> <laughs> but Although, it... according to Tanya, mm. in notes niya to somewhere, nakalimutan ko lang saan. Although, di, di ba, sabi ni Tanya, hindi pa raw to pasan laban. So, oh, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yes, yes. I think that's a good note to end on. So, Thank you guys for joining us. Everybody, Comic Cat this weekend, uh, Mega Trade Hall. Kaja will be there signing your copies of, of Book 8 and the new Book of Midnight.